Hello there, soul friends. Today, let us take a look at the Spring Sakura Katana by Dragon King, which is an offshoot of the reputed sword company Hongwei. It goes by different brand names for different styles of swords they make. For European swords, they are called Kingston Arms. For manufacturing post-apocalyptic style modern swords designed by Angus Chun, they are called Apoc. For Japanese swords, the brand name is Dragon King, and they inherited Hanwei's many traditions when it comes down to Japanese sword making, which we have been exposed to already with some other katana that we've acquired from this maker, such as the Tianga Fubu katana that has unique koshirai components made of two different metals with the aesthetic elements that commemorates the deeds of the legendary daimyo Oda Nobunaga. Just like most other katana by this maker, the unique design choices of the ornamental tuba, Fujikashua and Miniki are the highlights of the sword. The Spring Sakura Katana is no exception, as one of the four models in the Four Season series. The Sakura theme is weaved throughout the design of the hilt. The steel tuba depicting a singular cherry blossom steals the show. Instead of the typical Sakura themed tuba that has perforations or gold paint to depict a mass of flowers and sometimes even cherry tree branches, this tuba fashions a single sculpted blossom instead and has a lot of three dimensionality in its form, rather than the most typical flat disc on a sword guard. The edges of the petals and even the stamens are crisply defined. The petals curve slightly upward towards the direction of the blade, and the thickness tapers by following the forms of the petal. On the side that faces the wielder, even the sepals that are the small leafy parts cradling the corolla are depicted geometrically. Although it doesn't feature the complex two-metal design depicting the samurai helmet on the tuba of the Tianga Fubu Katana, the Sakura tuba is one of the most unique tuba designs I have seen, as it defines the look and the feel of the sword as a whole. It has a blackened matte finish to match the Fujikashira and looks quite striking in contrast to the silver sepa and the habaki, which in turn mirror the color of the silver maniki pair that also portray a mass of cherry blossom. The pair of maniki are of a one-off unique design. The silver sheen looks quite classy, and while the edges are clean and crisp, the rounded nature of the petals make it comfortable to handle in comparison to some other maniki designs. The fujikashira of the sword is a set that happily lets other hilt components take the spotlight and adopt more streamlined designs. Other than a groove, they have rather simple geometries. The pair of kashiragane are also made of silver, which matches the maniki, sepa, and the habaki. I like that the overall design of the hilt has emphasis and directs your eyes to certain parts, while not making everything sculpted to be overwhelmingly busy. The sukamaki is done competently, with very tight alternating knots and very even squares. The color has a very distinctive carmine shade, which is vivid but not overly bright, and carries a very slight purple tint. It goes very well with the sakura theme. The ito also goes very flush, with both the fuji and the kasha. There's no ledge or overlapping. The semigawa has a very natural color, meaning it's not overly bleached, and the panels are properly inlaid into the wood tuka core. However, the tuka is quite bulky like many Hanwei and Dragon King models. It is certainly much wider than the majority of katana we own, starting at 4 cm where it meets the fuji, although it doesn't have any wasted shape like the Tinka Fubu katana. It does taper in width all the way to 3.5 cm where it meets the kashira. Unlike some Hanwei and Dragon King swords, which have wide but thin tuka to even out the circumference, this tuka has a regular thickness, which makes it a bit too big to grab onto. Practitioners with small hands like mine might feel the sword tend to fly out of your grip when swung. Overall, the hilt is still well done, with a balanced and a tasteful design that's not overly gaudy. The distinctive hilt design is not to diminish the merits of the blade. It has a very typical Shinoki Tukuri blade geometry, 
of a very average lens, 28 inch blade with the habaki included, which leaves a nagasa of 2 shaku 2.5 sun. It has a very modest degree of curvature with a sari of 2 cm, and there is no bohi to lighten the blade. Both the profile taper and the distal taper are very evenly done throughout the blade. With a 33% profile taper and a 30% distal taper, it feels like a very average Edo period katana. When mounted, the sword weighs 2 pounds and 7 ounces or 1110 grams with the point of balance at 5.5 inches or 14 centimeters from the tuba. When swung, it feels like an authoritative sword with medium amount of agility. It's not a particularly fast or nimble sword, neither does it feel slow or clumsy. The only thing that can be done to slightly improve the handling of the sword has nothing to do with the blade, but making the suka a bit less bulky. The blade has a smooth mirror polish, as no fancy hasuya polish is needed to highlight any metallurgical fact on this mono steel through hardened blade. It is made of the tried and true 5160 high carbon spring steel and tempered to a mono hardness of 57 so that's slightly softer than the edges on traditionally made in Nihonto, but still quite hard to keep an edge well enough while not being brittle. Unlike Hanway, which is well known for using different exotic steels such as Root, L6, S7, and K120C Swedish powder steel, Dragon King only offers blade made out of folded steel, differentially hardened T10 tool steel, and 5160 spring steel, while the Tenkafubu Katana has a nice hamun from the clay tempering of the T10 tool steel. The spring sakura's blade does not have any hamun or hada, which is fine. I like how straightforward and unpretentious it is, and modern steels, when heat treated correctly, are more durable in any event. The edge bevel is one flat grind from the Shinogiji to the ha without any niku. So this is conducive to better performance at test cutting and keep the weight of the blade down. The Yokote line is regrettably not geometric, unlike the one on their higher-end Tenga Fuku Takana. Interestingly, the geometry of the tip is quite rounded and less acute than most katana. This is by design making the blade conform to the sakura theme. The Saya, following Dragon King's tradition, offers buffalo horn, koiguchi and koijiri, but not any metal furniture unlike the Tenka Fubusaya that features a horn kurigata. This one only has a wooden kurigata, but it is affixed to the saya and has lacquer painted over, featuring a pair of silver shitotome that's glued in. Other than that, it's a very standard and simple saya with black lacquer and black sagayo. The general look and feel of the sword is quite zen, with good contrast and clear focus. I wonder, Having more unique geometries, such as unuku pisukuri, or at least deep bohi or sori, will make it a bit more unique and appealing to female practitioners with nimbler handling. But even as it is, the sword is quite pleasant. Let's look at some cutting footage, shall we?
As you can see, the spring sakura katana handles light targets with ease. Nice. So not necessarily with as much grace as some of our lighter and faster katanas. The fit and finish of the mounting is excellent, with tight assembly showing almost no gap between components anyway. It isn't perfect. As you can see, the sepa is slightly bigger than the pedestal on the tuba, therefore leaving a small ledge visible from certain angles. Nevertheless, I can certainly recommend it to people who enjoy the sakura theme, though it might be a more interesting sword if you can remount the hilt onto a less generic blade. If you enjoyed this review, please leave a like and let me know if you want to see me reviewing the gorgeous Albion Chevalier Army Sword. Until next time!